Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I'm Rob and today I shall be attempting to take this Mazda RX-7 from 1982 from shabby to shiny. Uh, this one is not in terrible condition. You know, it's quite a nice little car. Uh, the Mazda RX-7, one of my favourite cars coming out of Japan, of course. And this one, it is a beautiful shape. Uh, but this, you know, I thought... I've got some new wheels uh, just been delivered and I kind of was searching through my boxes for something suitable really for uh, a set of wheels that in particular that I wanted to use and this one just said yep I'm gonna be perfect for those set of wheels so I'm gonna put them on I'm gonna paint in a lovely candy color and with 2,000 likes it will be given away it could be yours uh, let me know what you think I've taken pictures and on this rotisserie on a on a mirror i'll be uh, interested in your feedback but anyway we'll be drilling down the center of the post there is just one on this car and we'll remove that flange and tap that hole please do remember to lubricate the end of your piece you do not want to break it i broke it too many times now you think i'd learn but there we are so this is the little car opening doors on both sides but yeah, it's got some strange old tempos on there and the best way to take it apart is just like that um, I actually done that I think three times whilst on the rotisserie turning it around and I might have said a few naughty words because I had to rebuild it and put it in a different position but there we are we finally learned but the interior there in good condition nice bit of detail and the window section here it is not kind of stained it's not through aging that that is yellow um, there's no amount of peroxide or anything that's going to take that out it is just yellow plastic so that'll be staying and we've got these uh, wheels like I say they'll be going in the parts bin because we've got a nice set of JDM five spoke deep dishes to go on here today We've got the little retaining piece, which I don't put into the caustic solution. And I was going to put the base, and it's not in bad condition, to be honest. And I think just a little bit of extra paint going over there, just to freshen it up, will be fine. So I'll leave that out today. But the doors, as you can see here, eh, not too much detail on there. But into the footlong hot dog jar she goes covered in boiling water and in comes a tablespoon of caustic soda so not a huge reaction today but a little bit of a caustic soda on the side there we don't want to miss out on any of those so we give it a little swishy swish and see if we can see anything from any angle. There's a little bit of reaction there. To be honest, not a lot. I think you just about see there if the camera focuses. Yeah. Let's just put this to one side, let it do its business, and we can crack on with everything else. But the base here... Like I say, I'll give it a little bit of a, a brush up with some wire wool. Uh, but on goes the Pound Shop Matte Black. And this is just perfect for the bases. Gives a very realistic feel, I think. And there we go. Looking perfect, and that will dry off nicely in a satin finish. And then whilst that's to one side, we've got the plastics here, the interior glass and the interior itself. And now that we've cleaned up this window section, we'll drop it into the Pledge Revive It Floor Polish Solution. And giving it a little tap here. As you can see, looking good, looking good. And then back with the matte black again this time for the interior. I don't mind the red interior, but with the color that I had imagined for this car, 
a red interior was not going to be uh, suitable. And if it was me, if I had this car, I'd want a black leather interior. And this dries, it almost looks like it is. Really happy with this one. Making sure, back of the seats there, front of the seats, that I've grabbed all the little nooks and crannies. And again, that'll dry in a lovely satin finish. So the base here, as you can see, that looks great as it is, but this is a custom. So we're going to add a little bit of uh, bling to it. Got this uh, silver paint, and you'll see the tiny amount that I've uh, dropped on there. And then, with the brush, there's hardly... well. You'd, you'd think that there's no paint remaining on this paintbrush. But after that little dip, and then kind of wiping it all off, there is just a tiny amount here that will highlight any raised areas. And there we are. And I think you'll agree that looks pretty cool. It's very subtle. Very... Uh, very small difference maybe if I add a little bit more it'll be a bit more obvious There we are. You can see there on the raised pieces. Cause so compared to the just the standard black that it was, and then now with that just hair of paint. But it's been probably 20 minutes or so. This casting has been in this caustic solution it has done its thing as you can see the paint there is hanging off it's not all off but what does remain is certainly not going to cause us any issues and after flushing down the sink there I think that door looks pretty clear the second door yep she's clear and then you've got the casting here, so just wipe a little bit of loose paint off there. There's a couple of little bits, more so on the inside. I'd call this around a 95.2% paint removal today. But with the Tack Life at 3 out of 3, we'll give you a little sample of the uh, bonnet here. Look at that, looking beautiful. And having done it all over, we'll be using the Viejo. The black primer there. And yeah, as you can see, it looks nice and shiny all over. We'll hit it up from the underside, making sure to hit both the angles of the wheel arches there and the inside of the car. And then just a good, generous going over on the outside. And this will kind of flash off in about 10 or 15 minutes. So we move on then to the Bayejo metallic yellow. And I'm going to be going with a candy today, and I would usually go with either a, a silver or a gold. And I thought, why not try a yellow? So we'll go with the same method, starting from the underside of the car. 
and working our way around. You can see here that the yellow just wasn't flowing 100%. Perhaps when I cleaned it out last, my airbrush, I didn't do it fully. So after I've done this uh, first coat here, which is barely visible, I must admit, I did strip down the airbrush, found a little bit of junk in there, cleaned it out, and uh, yeah, finished off that uh, yellow coat before the next step. So now onto the candy, this is the magenta candy. And I wondered kind of what it would do or what kind of change would it make, you know, considering this is going to be over a yellow. And I think you can see already the spray pattern there. Certainly a, a lot more visible. Seemingly I did have quite the build up of crud in there and it was only allowing such a small amount of paint out but yeah we're back up and running to full speed again. And I'll just show you the first coat which will be a relatively light coat and then I ended up with uh, two further lighter coats before a, a heavier coat and then the clear coat. But I'm enjoying using these candies. I think they do make for a beautiful colour. But anyway, it's the following day. So we've got that base then, looking good. And these are the wheels that I've selected. They are slightly gold on the inside. And I've, what I've done is kind of raised up these tabs, which raise the wheels and ultimately lowers the car. That interior looks like it was made in black. Beautiful. This window section dry now. Looking good as new. And check out that colour. I really like it. But anyway, a little reminder of what she looked like. And this is the result. So, you know, first of all, you can see these wheels perfectly lowered. Just got a little bit of poke on them. Just beautiful shape and design of this car. I think the yellow on the tyres just kind of hints towards the uh, the yellow in the window section. But around back, a very steady hand for the Mazda sign there. And that rear number plate look. Of course painted in the rear lights, indicators and reverse. A little bit of chrome on the uh, exhaust tips. But yeah, look at that stance. Just a perfect dark shape. You can imagine how fast it looks like it's travelling at 100 miles an hour just sitting still. But yeah, what do you think about the um, the mirror? Still looking for your uh, input on that one. If you think it should stay or go. And remember to like this video. With 2,000 likes it could be yours. But anyway, let me take this opportunity to thank my amazing patrons. Thanks again guys. And to everybody else that's watched, like the video, subscribe, and I shall see you on the next one.